What's going on everybody, James here from Artificial Entertainment and welcome to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. And in today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at the ways to apply root motion. So let's go ahead and dive in. So I have here a third person project that I've added in a few things, just a simple animation blueprint, a character for us to use, as well as animations for us to be able to use with root motion in them. And the first thing that I want to talk about is how to be able to determine if an animation has root motion. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go into the asset pack here. So for me, I'm using the Gerzim sword pack. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm probably not. But if we go into any of these movements here, now you can see that we have a ton of different versions. However, some of them say in place. So that tells me that these are the in place animations. So if I click on, for example, this animation, and if I go to the skeleton tree and click on root, as you can see, there's now a line being driven from when the character starts and where the character ends. This tells me that there is root motion applied to this animation. Now, generally, if you buy a pack and there's root motion on one of them where it's supposed to be, it's generally a good bet that all of them have it, but if you need to, you can always go through one by one. However, we're going to be doing this on retargeted animations. So what we're going to do is, now that we know that our base animations have root motion, and I've already set up a retargeter here, so we can go ahead and just open up the IK retargeter here that I've got. And I'm gonna choose one of these all combos because this is like multiple attacks all in one. So you can see like this one's got a ton of different attacks going all over the place. And it actually has a lot of great forward motion. Now, one thing also just to consider when you're doing retargeting and you wanna keep root motion, if you go to the chain mapping, click on root, make sure that the translation mode is set to globally scaled. This will ensure that your root motion stays when you transfer all the animation data. So now that we have our chosen animation here, we're going to go ahead and just export the selected animation and I'll just put it right into my content folder. So now if I minimize, we'll see the animation here. So I can open this up and if I go and I just, you know, double check to make sure that root motion is there, we can see that root motion is still there, which is awesome. Now, but we want to be able to use this root motion when we actually have our character doing these attacks and making sure that it actually adjusts our character's position or our overall actor position with this animation's root motion track. So all we really need to do is we're going to go to the asset details inside of the animation itself and we're going to scroll down until you see root motion and then enable root motion. We're just going to click on this. Now, as soon as you do, you're going to see that the animation doesn't move anymore. It looks like it's in place, but don't worry. That's just exactly what's supposed to happen. So you didn't lose your root motion animation. It's just changing how it's interpolating it because it's going to apply it when you put it inside of a montage or if you enable it inside of an animation blueprint. And we're going to cover both of those today. So, but now that we have enable root motion checked and we have everything set up, we can now go ahead and just right click on our animation, go to create, and we're going to create an a montage and we'll just call this attack. So now we can use this montage inside of our third person character. So I'm just going to open up the character blueprint here and pull up the event graph. And then if we zoom in, I'm just going to use keyboard event E. So we'll take keyboard event E and on pressed, we'll just go play anim montage. We'll use the simple one. We don't need the one with all the extra end pieces. And then the anim montage we're going to play is going to be attack. Now, if we compile and save and then just hit play, if I hit E on the keyboard now, you see the character is stepping, moving forward each attack. Now I will say the animations are a little jerky. Um, and I think that's just, you know, the way the animations are. Usually when I use these specific ones, I have them playing a lot faster. But as you can see, root motion is applied. So that's as simple as it gets. When you're using root motion, you just got to make sure that there's a root motion animation track. And then when you export it, make sure that you have the globally scaled selected for the interpolation. And then from there, you can just add it into your montage. Now, let's talk a little bit about when you want to use it in an animation blueprint, though, because there is a setting that you have to change to be able to ensure that it's actually going to work. So I have a simple animation blueprint here that I've set up. So if I go into my retargeting folder here and I just pull up the animation blueprint here, this is the one that's running the uh, characters right now. And when you pull this up, if you go up to class defaults, you're going to see root motion as an option here under the details panel. Now, by default, root motion from montages only is what it's set to. However, we can take the drop down here, change it to root motion from everything. And to prove to you that this works, we're just going to open up the state machine. And I'm going to take that great sword attack, but not the montage version, just the animation sequence version of it. And then what we're going to do is pull off the entry. We're going to make sure to add a state, not just the animation into it. And then we'll double click, open up the state, and we'll put this animation as just, you know, the base state that it's going to run all the time. And now it's using a root motion animation. So... If I go ahead and I hit play, if I touch nothing on the keyboard, as you can see, it immediately starts playing and all the root motion is kept. 
Now, one thing just to show you guys, if you do not have that selected and you do not make sure to select root motion for everything under the class default of your animation blueprint, this is what's going to happen. So root motion from montages only. We'll compile, save, minimize, and then hit play. Now you can see that the character moves, but the capsule does not. The ca uh, camera does not. Nothing moves except for the character mesh. So the root motion does not actually get tracked the way it's supposed to. But the second we make sure to set it to root motion from everything, it'll now do exactly what we want it to do, moving the character and the capsule component and the camera all at the same time. So that's root motion, guys. It's very, very, very simple. The main thing is, is that you have root motion data inside of the actual animation itself. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, we got a lot more coming out. And just I do apologize about the delay. Uh, I know there hasn't been any videos in almost a month now. Um, I've just been working out a lot of stuff in the background. But we're going to be putting out a lot more videos as time goes on. So make sure to stay tuned. And as always, stay animated.